أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على الكريم وعلى آله وأصحابه من السنة بسنة في الدين أما بعد رب الشان لصدري والسل لأمري وحل أغضة من لساني يبقى غالي اللهم أرنا الحق حق وضن اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطل وجنابا اللهم إنا نسألك خير ما سألك عبدك رسولك ونبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من شر ما سعاد بك عبدك رسولك ونبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم my dear mother and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh on this blessed day of Yom al-Jum'ah on the, of the second Jum'ah of Ramadan and the eighth uh, of Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our fasting, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our prayers and ibadah and all the worship that we do in this month. This is a month of rahmah, this is a month of mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a month where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showers His mercy upon us, the believers. And some of the signs of His mercy, as we know already, that the gates of hell are closed, the gates of heaven are open, the shariateen are chained in chains and restricted and uh, isolated. These are all signs of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is a month where Allah revealed the Qur'an, Shah Ramadan, the until the Qur'an. So this Quran is also a mercy of Allah SWT for us. And we are in the Ashura, in the first 10 days of Rahmah, as we know of Ramadan. These are the first 10 days where we are asking and beseeching, pleading to Allah SWT for His mercy. We're asking Him that, oh Allah, bless us with your Rahmah, with your mercy. And, you know, and the person who cannot survive without the mercy, will not live without the mercy of Allah SWT. And Allah SWT is so merciful, so merciful, you know, that Allah SWT, uh, you know, كتب على نفسه الرحمة. Allah says in Surah Al-Am, Surah 6, كتب على نفسه الرحمة. Allah has, uh, uh, has written for himself, has mandated, obligated for himself, رحمة, you know, mercy. And this is also written on the arsh of Allah SWT, that is, uh, uh, his rahma takes over his ghadab, his anger, his displeasure. So we are dealing with the Lord who is a merciful Lord, Allah SWT, who is uh, loving and al-wadud, who is 70 times more loving than a mother loves a child. Now the question people ask, you know, how and where, you know, how big, how vast is the mercy of Allah? How far can we fathom the rahma, mercy of Allah? Allah says a beautiful ayah in Surah Araf, Surah 7, Verse number 156, many of you may be listening it in your taraweeh because it comes in the ninth juice, ninth part of the Qur'an and wherever people are following the Qur'an in taraweeh, it will come up in the ninth juice, ninth part of this ayah in Surah Araf, Surah 7, verse 156. Allah SWT tells us that وَكْتُبْ لَنَا فِي هَذِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَ وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ إِنَّ هُدْنَا إِلَيْهِ And write for us, O Allah, in this dunya, goodness, uh, righteousness, وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ And also in the hereafter, in the next life, إِنَّ هُدْنَا إِلَيْهِ Verily, we are guided towards you. And then Allah says, قَالَ أَزَابِ أُصِيبُ بِهِ مَنْ أَشَاءَ My punishment will afflict whoever I wish upon them to afflict the punishment. And then Allah says the beautiful words, وَرَحْمَتِ وَسِعَتْ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ my rahmah, my mercy is vast, wasi'at kull shay. Everything that you can think of in this whole wide world, everything that you can perceive of in this whole universe, Allah's rahmah is vast and expansive and bigger than that. Subhanallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Say Allahu Akbar, my dear brother and sister Islam. Just realize that we are dealing with a God, we're dealing with a Lord. Who is so vast in his rahmah? Wa rahmati wasi'at kulla shay. Allah is saying, my rahmah is vast and big and over encompassing everything, even bigger than Saturn and Jupiter and all the planets and the galaxy and Milky Way is beyond that. We are dealing, we are dealing with a very, very merciful Lord, merciful God, Allah, Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim, Al Wadud, Al Hanan, Al Manan, Al Latif. Allah is Al Razak. Allah is Al Fatah. You know, he opens the doors of blessings upon us. And this Allah that we are dealing with is so, so loving, so wadud from wood, that he wants to shower his mercy upon us. He wants to give us his mercy. And that's why Allah says in the same ayah, verse 156, Surah Araf, about after those words, وَرَحْمَةِ وَأَسِيَدْ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ And my mercy is bigger than everything, you know, vast and expansive. فَسَأَكْتُبُهَا Then I will write it down. Writing here means prescribe. It is mandated. 
the mercy of Allah is obligated, mandated for whom? Listen up, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam. Allah says, I will give this mercy, I will mandate, obligate this mercy of mine, Rahma of Allah, for those yattaqun who have taqwa of Allah. And number two, and zakat, they give the obligatory charity, the zakat. As you know, that this is a month, a month of giving, a month of spending in the path of Allah. And many people love to give their zakat, whichever masjid or whichever charity you want to give to. This is the time because everything that we give in this month is multiplied exponentially by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is rahmah. So Allah is saying, Three qualities, three characteristics Allah mentions about the people who will receive, the recipients of the mercy, rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number one are those who have taqwa. Number two are those who are giving zakat, who are spending the money in his path. Now, some people may think that, okay, zakat is not fard on me. It's not wajib. I don't have enough savings. I don't have enough money. Because zakat, you have to be above misab, above a certain threshold. So, yes, you can give sadaqah. You know, there is no harm in giving sadaqah, even if you are not obligated to give zakat. The concept here, what Allah is saying, zakat, zakat, yuzakki, means purify. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the concept is, give, is giving us here is that give in the path of Allah. Be a person who's giving. Don't be stingy. Don't be bakhil. Don't be, don't be somebody who holds the money by teeth, you know, like Addu alayhi bin nawajis. You know, as the hadith tells us that they hold onto it by their molar teeth. Don't be someone who's always guarding and holding the money, you know, on their, on their, by, by their teeth. But be someone who is generous. Be someone who's prosperous. Because in money, Omal, is just like a river flowing. You know, if you put a dam on it, if you put a wall and hold the river, hold the water, yes, it starts storing. But then down the drain, it's not coming. So when it starts storing, the water flow, the speed of the water from behind also slows down because it starts getting friction. And it starts seeing that water is being held up. So it starts pulling back also. So this is the concept Allah is giving, that if you stop the money we're giving you, then you are holding back the, the barakah that's coming from Allah. The money that's coming from Allah is going to be also restricted. But if you keep giving, keep donating, keep sadaqah, Allah will also keep giving. That's what Allah says time and again. More than 10 ayats in the Quran, they start, have the same phrase. They spend from the money that we, Allah, gave them. The money we have is not our money, brothers and sisters. Give your money. And who is better to be getting it than ICNA, ICNA, as you are watching this on Islamic Circle of North America? This Friday program and this Friday thing, this is the best time to give to ICNA. You can just go to www.icna.org and donate. Donate any amount you want. As you know, that this is the time, this is the month to give. And ICNA does all these beautiful programs. This is a program also that is coming to you live right now. Blessing from ICNA, Islamic Circle North America. The brothers and sisters, the volunteers, they're working tirelessly to bring many different programs online. So we need to spend in the path of Allah. And this is a good way to spend in the path of Allah. Subhanahu and that's why Allah says that don't worry, don't be scared. Money is not going to go away. That money you're spending, it will be coming back to you many, many fold. Especially in this month, month of Ramadan, it it, it can come exponentially. Wallahu liman yasha bi ghayri hisab. Allah says he gives to whomever he wants without any hisab, without any formula, without any calculation. You know, and that's why why we spend to get the mercy from Allah. Allah says, wa rahmati wa asiyat kulla shay, fa saaktubuha lil ladhina yattaqoon wa yautuna dhaka. Uh, and they give uh, they give the zakat وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ بِأَيْنَا يُؤْمِنُونَ And those who are believing in our ayat. Ayat here means both the ayat of the Qur'an, the verses of the Qur'an, and it also means the signs and symbols of Allah. When Allah sends a sign to us about Him, then we remember. For example, this corona, this pandemic, this is a sign from Allah also. It's a sign of his displeasure. He is unhappy with us, the Bani Adam, the children of Adam. They have done so many audacious, audacity kind of work. People have done all kinds of disobediences. So Allah is upset and has sent this waba, this pandemic, to jolt us up, to shake us up, to remind us that, you know, that there is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we see these signs, we believe in that. And if we become believer in his sign, then we will get the rahmah of Allah that he has promised. Look, the ayah, it's amazing, the Arabic language. Allah says, فَسَأَكْتُبُهَا I shall write. You know how we go to the doctor, a physician, he writes a 
prescription for us. Why doesn't the doctor ever just tell you, you know, take this medicine? They write it because they don't want to get in trouble. That, oh, uh, you said it verbally and they forgot it verbally and they didn't remember and then they got more sick, so they might get in trouble. So the, right, the doctor writes a prescription because then it becomes binding, it's obligatory. If you don't take the medicine that is written on the prescription, and then you come and complain to the doctor, 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 I'm not getting well, I'm getting worse. He said, well, did you take the prescription, the thing that I wrote it down? No, I didn't take it. Well, why? Why didn't you take it? In the same way Allah SWT is saying, in the same way Allah SWT is saying, فَسَأَكْتُبُهَا I will write, prescribe my rahmah to the people who have these three things. Number one, taqwa. Number two, giving in the path of Allah SWT. And number three, believing in the signs of Allah SWT. Now, some people ask, you know, how vast is the mercy of Allah? You know, Allah says here, وَرَحْمَةِ وَسِعَتْ كُلَّ شيء. My rahmah is vast and bigger uh, than everything. Uh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in, uh, in a hadith Qudsi has informed us, uh, you know, through Rasulullah uh, in one of the hadiths that there are a hundred parts of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. SubhanAllah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has hundred parts of his mercy. 99 of those parts of Rahmah of Allah have been reserved, preserved for when? For Yawm Al-Qiyamah, Day of Judgment. On Yawm Al-Qiyamah, Allah will use His 99 parts of His Rahmah. One part of that Rahmah of Allah SWT, one part of that mercy of Allah SWT is uh, that we see in the parents with their children, the mother with her child, the animals with each other, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, this is the hadith of Rasulullah that uh, uh, And Salman qala qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa inna Allah khalaqa yawma khalaqa as-samad wal-ard mi'atu rahma kullu rahmatin tibaq ma bayna as-sama wal-ard wa ja'ala minha fi al-ard rahmatan fa biha ta'tifu al-walida ala waladiha wal-wahsh wa al-tayr ba'duhu ala ba'd وَإِذَا كَانَ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَكْمَلَهَا بِهَذِهِ الرَّحْمَةِ الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر كبير سلمان الفارسي رضي الله عنه who is narrating that the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said verily on the day of uh, verily on the day Allah created the heavens and the earth he created 100 parts of his mercy a mia to rahma you know 100 parts each part can fill what is between the heaven and the earth. Every part of this 100 parts can fill up between the heaven and the earth. Imagine 100 parts, how big it is. It is, it is vast, it's, it's beyond our imagination, beyond any numerical calculation. And that is what Allah SWT said in Surah Araf, Surah 7, verse 156, kulla shay. But then sisters, we are in the Ashr of Rahmah, we are in the 10 days of the Rahmah of the Ramadan of Allah. So we need to ask Him for His Rahmah, we need to beg Him and beseech Him and plead Him and cry to Him that, Oh Allah, we ask of Your, rah of your Rahmah. Allahumma inna nas'aluka rahmat al-wasi'ah. Allahumma inna nas'aluka bi rahmatik al-wasi'ah. Oh Allah, we ask you of the, your vast mercy that you have, yet you shower upon all your khala'iq, upon all your creations. So Allah, uh, so Rasulullah said, each part of that mercy of Allah, of the hundred parts, each part fills up between the heavens and the earth, whatever is there. He made one part of that mercy for the earth. Out of that hundred parts, he made one part. Just one part of that mercy is for the earth. And, and, and what is that on the earth, the part of mercy of Allah? He says, that is what from it, from, uh, from it, from that one part is these different examples of the mercy of Allah that he's giving Rasulullah now. That from it, from that one part of the mercy is a mother that has compassion for her child. Animals and birds have compassion for each other. What does animal and bird have to do with compassion? You know, the, in the jungle out there, in the wildlife out there, there are some animals, they hunt the other animals, they kill the others. They have animals, they have fighting with each other, you know, they may hurt each other. So sometimes animals let go and they have, you know, many times you've seen that National Geographic video, you know, the National Geographic channel, you see many of those wildlife videos that a lion comes near, you know, looking for something and sees an animal, sees a deer, but then leaves it. That is, this is the rahmah that Allah, that Allah has given to 
that one part of rahmah that Allah has given around in this world from which from it is a mother having compassion rahmah to her child animals having compassion to one another you know what made that lion get away not to eat that animal it is just the rahmah of Allah that he has embedded because on any other given day the lion would really love to eat and hunt anything so Allah is referring to that even with the birds the eagle the hawk you know the crow or anything any of the birds that may be fighting each other or maybe hunting each other uh, Rasul is saying that when you see any animal showing compassion to another animal remember this is one of one of the one part of the rahmah of Allah remember this one part is not just one these are examples within that one part so just imagine how big those other 99 parts of rahmah is so in that one part is also animals and comp having compassions to each other and on the day of resurrection Allah will perfect his mer this mercy with the other 99 parts you know this hadith is so mind-boggling my dear brothers and sisters whenever I read this hadith it sends a chill down my spine you know it really gives you a shiver like a 440 volt you know jolt you know why because if one part of the mercy of Allah, if one part of the mercy of Allah is just this that we see in this world right now, in terms of the different makhluk, imagine what those 99 parts are. And this also tells me one more thing, that on that day of judgment, how angry Allah will be. Ghadab Allah, ghadab, the ghadab, the anger of Allah. How upset Allah will be with us, the makhluk, on Yom al Qiyamah. We would have come on Yom al Qiyamah with so many sins, with so many disobediences. We would have come to Allah on that day of judgment with so many, uh, you know, uh, transgression uh, and fisk and fujur that Allah has reserved and held 99 parts of the Rahmah. Allah will use all the 99 parts of the Rahmah. He will use all of that on Yom Al Qiyamah. This shows you that he has reserved that Rahmah to restrain his anger. Even on the Day of Judgment, he does not want to be angry with us. Even on the Day of Judgment, he does not want to punish us. Like Allah says in Surah Nisa, Surah 4, beautiful ayah, مَا يَفْعَ اللَّهُ بِعَذَابِكُمْ إِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ وَآمَنْتُمْ what will Allah achieve by punishing you? Ma yafal. Yafal means work, action. What will Allah achieve? What will Allah do by punishing you? He can punish you in a second, but He does not want to punish you. Allah doesn't love to punish you. Allah loves to forgive you. Allah wants to give you chances, give you muhla. He has given Iblis a muhla. You think the God that gave Iblis, Lanatullah alayhi, He gave Iblis a muhla, a chance, a respite, till the day of judgment, ila yawma yubasun. You think Allah will not give us a chance? Allah will not give us a muhla. This Ramadan is a chance. This Ramadan is a muhla. It's a chance for us to get the qurb of Allah, to get the rahmah of Allah, to ask Allah, to beg Allah, to ask Allah, that oh Allah, make me from your wali. Make me a wali of Allah. And you know, brothers and sisters, if you're listening, listen up carefully. I teach you a small, small, very small formula, secret formula to become a wali of Allah. Wali means literally a friend, a protector, means a close, intimate friend. When Allah takes you as his wali, when Allah makes you his friend, then you have the whole nine yards. You are like an autopilot. You are in cruise control. Everything in life will become serene and, and beautiful because Allah is your friend. And when Allah is your friend and not just and not just a sadiq, a rafiq, a friend, Allah is your wali, meaning a close friend, an intimate friend, one you can rely and bank on, one you can depend on, one you can even, you know, call upon any time, any second. So what is that formula? Are you ready to listen? Write it down, get a pen and a paper, a very simple formula. Especially in this Ramadan, if you apply it now and it will become a habit so that after Ramadan, you can continue applying it in your life and it will become easy. This is the secret formula that our ulama, our fuqaha have taught us. And it is it is istikhraj, it is istinbat, it is deduced and inferred from the hadith of Rasul You know the hadith of Rasul he said that every night, kullu layla, not just Ramadan, every night, 365 nights a year, every night Allah comes to the lowest of the heavens. You know, that famous hadith that we've been listening from day one, from our childhood. Every night Allah comes to the lowest of the heaven of the Sama, and He asks, in openingly, He asks, is there anyone who has, who wants forgiveness, I will give forgiveness. Is there anyone who wants a haja, and I will fulfill their haja. Is there anyone who wants Jannah, and I'll give them Jannah. So every night Allah is coming to the lowest heaven, to the, uh, you know, to, closer to us, asking us, is there anybody? And what are we doing? We are fast asleep. But there are some people who are wali of Allah. 
who are the friends of Allah, intimate, close friends of Allah, when Allah comes down to that lowest level, He wakes them up. He wakes them up. Yes, brothers and sisters, He wakes them up from the sleep. There are so many people who get up and pray tahajjud. There are so many people who make wudu and they get up in salah, and they start praying and they're crying and they're asking Allah while the rest of humanity is every even a, even your spouse could be you know snoring although it's better you that they don't snore but your spouse could be snoring in your room and you are talking to allah you are talking and communicating with allah this is a sign that allah loves you because who wakes you up in the middle of the night think about this my dear brothers and sisters this is a sign of the rahmah of allah the rahmah wasi'ah that we're talking about here in surah Araf. I give a small example. We say in Arabic, ala. To Allah belongs the highest example. There's no comparison between the example I'm going to give you now and the example of Allah. Allah is far above and beyond that example. But just to make each one of us, myself and you, understand, I'm giving this example. When you have a best friend, an intimate friend, someone who you would die for, literally speaking, someone who you would do anything, anytime, they're so close to you. They've been with you all your life. They've been through the thick and thin. You know, they're like buddy, buddy, that... You know, your, your intimate friend, this is the wali we're talking about. The word wali literally in Arabic means someone who's very close to you, very, very beloved to you, very intimate. So someone who is your friend in dunya, and if at the middle of the night, at three in the morning, they, are, they have a need, they have a necessity, they have an emergency, and they call you, that means what? You are their wali, you are their friend, right? That's why. They didn't call anybody else. They, know, they, sh they didn't shy away from calling you. They just picked up the phone and they say, yes, let me call this person. This guy is my best friend. This guy is my intimate friend. This guy I can rely on anytime. I am now in dire need. It's three in the morning. This guy will not get upset. He will not get angry or yell or shout or scream at me on the phone. And you, when you pick up the phone, you say, yes, hello. Yeah, what happened? What's wrong? You need help? Okay, I'm coming. You just drop the phone down. You change your pajamas. You get in the car. You go to that person because you are their wali. You are their friend. And they are waking you up. They, didn't, they could have woke someone else up, but they chose you. Why did they chose you? Because you have always been there for them in all the time, in prosperity, adversity, and thick and thin. You have proven to that person that I am your wali. I'm your intimate friend. That's why they woke you up. Now, this is what I mean. Think about it. When Allah gives you the tawfiq to wake up for tahajjud, He's saying, I love you. I love you, my slave. I love you, your Bani Adam. Come. So if we want to become the wali of Allah, if we want the attention of Allah, if we want to tell Allah that, oh Allah, make me your wali. Because Allah is very choosy, very selective. Allah doesn't take any Tom, Dick and Harry out there. Any Ahmed Salman or Muhammad out there doesn't become the wali of Allah. Allah is very selective. Allah has a screening process. Allah wants to see what is this person, you know, what does... Does, what does this person have? Does it have the true mental to become my wali? So for that, we have to first prove to Allah. We have to show Allah. We have to present to Allah that, Oh Allah, I am able and capable to become your wali. Oh Allah, I am and I want to be your wali, your friend. So for that, my dear brother, sister in Islam, what we have to do is we have to at least get up 10 minutes every night to pray to Allah. When we st and the reason I say 10 minutes is because we want to defeat the shaitan. Shaitan, Iblis, Lanatullah, shaitan is very slick, very smart, very shrewd. Shaitan will say, no, 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 don't wake up at Tajjud. One hour, half an hour is too long. You need to sleep. You need to catch up sleep. You need to go to job tomorrow morning. You know, you got to do this. So shaitan puts this waswasa, defeat the shaitan, you know, it is talbisu iblis, the tricks and treachery of iblis. So defeat the shaitan, just tell shaitan, no, 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 I'm just going to get up for 10 minutes. And what better month to do and what better time to do than now, now in Ramadan. We're getting for, up for suhoor anyway, right? We have to fill up and put something in our mouths for suhoor. So wake 10 minutes earlier that I will eat my suhoor quickly. I will quickly finish up my suhoor and then I'll get up to pray just two rakah. It hardly takes 10 minutes to pray two rakah start small grow big start with this philosophy that i want to be a wali of allah and i'm going to donate or dedicate 10 minutes of my night sleep to allah so as you are getting up for suhoor start getting in the habit of praying tahajjud two rakah well, either before suhoor or after suhoor as long as you do it before the azan of fajr it is counted it is accepted and allah will see this gesture allah will see that look oh this person in this Ramadan in this Ashra of Rahmah, this person wants uh, 
by Rahman, this person is, is this person never woke up for tahajjud before in their whole life. They're doing now, so let's give them more. And now we say in Ramadan, this is the best month to uh, to form habits. Good habits form in Ramadan. If you keep praying tahajjud, just 10 minutes every day, little time every night, 10 minutes of Ramadan, you will see that after Shawwal, you will continue to pray. And if you just keep programming yourself that even Shawwal and Zilqaada, Zilhijjah and Muharram and all the months, I'll just get up 10 minutes. 10 minutes before Fajr, 15 minutes before Fajr, I'll just get up, make wudu and pray. You will see that you'll do it for a month or two months and three months. Gradually, you'll see that your stamina starts building. You know, like athletes, they want to run a marathon. They don't just jump right away and run a marathon. They start with 50 meters, then 100 meters, then a kilometer, then two kilometers. They build their stamina. So this is how we build tahajjud. You build your tahajjud, the alaqa with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Start 10 minutes, then increase 20 minutes, then 40 minutes, then 60 minutes. In one year's time, next Ramadan, you'll be seeing by that time, you are a regular tahajjud person. You're praying tahajjud every night and you're doing it on your own because in the middle of the night, Allah wakes you up. You don't need alarm, you don't need a bell, you don't need anyone to come and shake you up and wake up. Your eye just opens up. Like Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Sajda, Surah Hamim Sajda, Surah 31, and that, uh, 32, sorry, Allah says, تَتَجَافَ جُنُوبُهُمْ عَنِ الْمَضَاجِ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ خَوْفًا وَتَمْعًا تَتَجَافَ جُنُوبُهُمْ عَنِ الْمَضَاجِ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ خَوْفًا وَتَمْعًا Allah says that their bodies get up, تَتَجَافَ جُنُوبُهُمْ their bodies they move and shake they're going tops and turning you know and the the, the sleep that the deep sleep they had they starts becoming lighter and lighter they start topsing and turning around on the bed and then they just get up they leave the bed uh to what yaduna rabbahum to make dua to the lord at the hajjah time they're calling up lord with hope with fear and tama and expectation anticipation and desire so brothers and sisters as we conclude this friday talk it's almost two o'clock it is too as we conclude make sure that we understand the rahmah of allah SWT, or rahmati wa'asiyat kulla shay and we understand the three things that allah SWT mentioned in that ayah and we understand this hadith of rasulullah that rahmah of allah has 100 parts and 99 is reserved for akhirah one is right now here and let us understand how to become the wali of allah i taught you a simple formula if you like this formula if you accept this formula if you love it pass it on to someone else share the khair share the goodness tell other people that look you want to become a wali you want to become a friend of allah then do this thing and you'll see in your life and just simple 10 minutes start off at 10 minutes forget about that hour two hour you will see in a few years time that 10 minute that you start off with is now becoming so easy for you that you can stay up even one two hours at night for tajud may allah swt accept our ibadah in this ramadan may allah swt forgive our sins may allah forgive our shortcomings may allah give us his taqwa his fear may allah swt give us his consciousness and may Allah, Allah subhanAllah, may Allah please, please make us all his wali. May Allah make his, his best friend, his best intimate friend. We all become the wali of Allah. People have a misconception to become a wali. You have to be a very old person in 70 or 80, white hair, white eyebrows, white beard. No, even a young person can be a wali of Allah. Anyone can become a wali of Allah. Even a child can be a wali of Allah. You know, all Allah wants is his ta'alluq, his rabt ma'allah on the day of judgment, on human qiyamah. Being with Allah SWT attached and that's what I said who do you call in the middle of the night when you need help you ask your best friend because you rely on them you they wake you up so Allah when he wakes you up when you automatically start waking up for tahajjud without any help without any alarm know that now Allah has made you his wali because only a wali wakes up a wali only a wali wakes up a wali in the middle of the night to make a bad like Allah says in the Quran وَمَا تَوْفِيقِ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ my tawfiq my encouragement is from no one except Allah so when Allah gives us the tawfiq for tahajjud every single night 365 nights a year remember the good news has come you are now a wali of Allah and Allah is your protector your friend may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our ibadah wa akhir dawan wa alameen wa salatu salam wa salam wa salam والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا الله نستغفرك ونتوب إليك الله